In this series of videos, I'm going to be overhauling the bottom end of my 2017 KTM 250 EXC. The bike has done 456 hours, still runs great, but I decided it's a good interval to do some preventative maintenance and overhaul the bottom end, including changing out all the uh, bearings and also putting a new conrod in the crankshaft. You'll be able to follow step by step. I'll share any information regarding special tools and also tips and tricks. In this video, I'm going to be overhauling the crankshaft by replacing the conrod, the big end bearing, the thrust washers, and the crank pin. And I should mention that to overhaul the crankshaft yourself, having some specialist tools makes it a lot easier. At a minimum, you'll need a hydraulic press. Um, if you don't have those tools already and don't want to invest in them, certainly the cheapest option is to have a, a company overhaul the crankshaft for you. Or you could purchase a KTM OEM crankshaft, uh, which is pre-assembled and ready to install. So it's important to uh, price out those options and decide what you're going to do. If you've been following this series and wondering why there was a bit of a gap between uh, the last episode and this episode, the reason was this. Um, I decided to go ahead and purchase the KTM crankshaft press jig. Um, it was on back order and I waited for about five months for it to become available. I finally got it and uh, after I had it I decided to go ahead and start the filming of this project. Um, in the last episode I split the cases, I got the crankshaft out and for the first time I was able to uh, do a test fit of the crankshaft in the jig and to my horror it would not fit inside. Um, so I measured the internal dimension of the jig and uh, found it was 0.3 millimeters too small. And uh, I don't often swear that much, but uh, I, I swore quite heavily for about uh, at least a couple of minutes. After I calmed down, um, I decided to figure out what the issue was. So I checked the part number and uh, found that the last digit on the part number on the jig is uh, different from what I ordered. So this is made in two parts, it's super beefy. Uh, combined it, it weighs about uh, 16 kilograms. So the inner part uh, you can remove, just pulls out. And uh, the part number on this part uh, is one digit different from uh, the part I ordered. So I thought, oh, the shop must have sent me the wrong part. So I sent them the, the details, they contacted KTM and checked, and uh, it turns out it's the right part. And the part number I ordered uh, is the combination of the inner and uh, the pressing plate which goes on top. So the part's correct, but uh, obviously the dimension is incorrect, so they must have machined it incorrectly. So I did some measurements, um, found that uh, it's 0.3 millimeters too small for the crank to fit, sent that information off and uh, I'm still waiting for a reply um, from the shop um, and uh, yeah I decided I couldn't wait any longer so what I did was machined uh, the internal part of the jig myself on my lathe uh, finished it off and uh, it's fitting perfectly now. I'm uh, really pleased with it. It wasn't easy because uh, it's got this slit machined into it if I take it out, so here you can see the inner part more clearly. It's got this slit machined in it. When you turn it on the lathe, uh, because of the weight difference, the imbalance, it uh, vibrates a lot. So I had to put a counterweight on here, turn it, uh, but because of the slit, it creates an interrupted cut which generates chatter. It was quite tricky to uh, machine, but I got there. And I'm really pleased with the result. The fit is really good. With the crankshaft, I've got just about the right amount of clearance. Um, I'm sure it's going to do a good job. Um, so, that, yeah, that was a major headache and created a lot of delay, unfortunately. The other thing I ran into, which is more of a minor issue, is I decided to purchase a ProX Conrod kit, which you can see here. Uh, they have very good reviews, reliability, reputation, and also good value for money. Um, but the assembly method I'm going to be using is uh, you basically press the pin into one crank web, 
assemble everything and then press the other crank grip to the width of the pin. So the pin length is actually quite important for determining the overall uh, crank web width. Of course you can press the pin out a little bit afterwards and adjust that but uh, anyway I decided to measure the length of the pin and it's specified as 60.00 millimeters on the ProX web page and found it to be 59.75 millimeters so 0.25 millimeter difference. I contacted ProX and asked them about this and uh, they said that uh, actually the part number of the pin uh, it specifies the length as 59.6 millimeters so quite a bit shorter and that would definitely require some adjustment after using the uh, press jig so I decided to uh, go ahead and put also purchase a KTM OEM uh, Conrod kit to compare um, and uh, based on that decide which one to use and later in the video you'll see some measurements before deciding whether to overhaul your crankshaft or purchase a new one, uh, it's a good idea to inspect it carefully. So on the shaft, it's threaded at both ends and you want to make sure the threads are in good condition. Also that the shaft is straight and uh, if someone else has been hammering on the end of the shaft, it can become mushroomed and uh, difficult to use. Also the bearing journals, you want to make sure there's no uh, wear on those and on the crank webs you want to check for marks, dents, etc. Uh, if everything looks in good shape um, then yeah you can decide to go ahead and uh, overhaul it. Obviously uh, the conrod you're going to be replacing so it doesn't matter too much about that. And before you disassemble the crankshaft it's a good idea to take some basic measurements. So you can see here I'm measuring uh, the width of the crank webs which is 59.98 millimeters. Another measurement you can make is the Conrod axial play um, at the big end bearing. So the method is you push the uh, Conrod over to one side and measure the gap between the Conrod and uh, the crank webs and use a feeler gauge to see which one fits in. So I've already done this measurement and 0.7 fits in and 0.8 does not fit in. And the KTM spec is between 0.6 and 0.7 so it's at the upper limit of the spec. Um, I previously actually measured it and uh, I don't think 0.7 fitted in but uh, possibly I wasn't pushing everything over hard enough so just now I, I quite firmly pushed over everything and 0.7 does fit in. This is the flywheel side of the crankshaft and if you look carefully here uh, there's a inner bearing race uh, which is a press fit onto the crankshaft and uh, this race is going to be replaced so the first step is to remove uh, the inner race from the crankshaft. And the method I'm going to be using to remove the inner race is to heat it up uh, using the KTM special tool. So you heat this tool up to 180 degrees C and then put it onto the inner race and then pull up. And I'm holding uh, the crankshaft in uh, vice and uh, using soft jaws. And the plate you see here is the KTM crankshaft press plate and uh, it's used for disassembly. You'll see me using it later. Uh, for this job it's really just supporting the flywheel until you do up the uh, the vise so uh, it's not essential you have the, this plate for this job uh, but it, it does help and uh, you'll probably need it later anyway when you're pressing out the pin. And to heat up the tool I'm using a hot plate. Uh, this one is handy because of the size also it has a uh, thermostat control uh, so it goes from 140 up to 250 degrees C. I've got it set to 180 degrees C right now um, it's large enough to fit uh, the crank cases in as well, uh, which you'll see me doing in later episode uh, to remove the bearings on that. So I'm just going to leave that in there to warm up, put the uh, cover on. Okay, so I ha have some thick leather gloves on. I've heated my tool up to 180 degrees. I'm going to clamp it on and pull up and it came off very easily. Just a couple of seconds. And here you can see the inner race which I just removed. Um, and what it looks like. And before I go ahead and, and disassemble uh, the crankshaft by pressing this pin out, um, I decided it'd be a good idea to measure the run out um, of both of the uh, bearing journals. Um, KTM spec is uh, 0.03 millimeters or 30 microns. And I measured uh, the flywheel side run out at 16 microns and uh, the clutch side at 4 microns.
So both well within spec and uh, I didn't notice any vibration issues or anything strange. Um, so that gives a, a good target for what to aim for when assembling and truing the new crank and uh, I'll use those numbers a, as a reference. And this is the press I'm going to be using. It's a 20 ton floor standing model and it can be either operated by air or manually. And it has some handy features. So on the top of the ram cylinder, you can see there's a uh, gauge which goes from zero up to 28 tons. The red line starts at 20. So uh, you can monitor the force while you're pressing and uh, determine uh, whether it's going okay or whether something's wrong. So at the base of the press, you can see a couple of modifications I made. I added some wheels uh, so I can move the press around my garage quite easily. It's quite heavy. Uh, so I wouldn't want to lift it, uh, certainly not on my own. Um, and I also added a uh, foot-operated uh, switch for the air, uh, which controls the ram cylinder. So by pressing this, I, can, I have both hands free, and uh, I can focus on the press work and operate the ram using my foot. Really handy. Okay, so this is the press tool setup I have for pressing out the crankshaft pin. On the top I have the KTM special tool uh, press plate which you saw me using earlier and uh, I positioned that on some blocks to raise it up off uh, the press tool beams. The reason being is the gap uh, between the beams is not uh, big enough for the crankshaft webs to pass through and uh, it needs to be able to pass through because I'm going to uh, be pushing the pin through one crank web and pushing out the other crank web. Um, so by raising it up, um, I have enough room, or I can create enough room between these blocks for the crank web. Uh, the other benefit of doing it like this is once I put in the crankshaft, you'll be able to see there's plenty of room for me to put my hand underneath here and support uh, the lower uh, crank web as it's being pressed out and catch it to stop it falling. Um, and then uh, I'm going to be using this press tool. Um, the blank stock was actually supplied with the KTM jig and I machined it to size. So this part locates into the pin and uh, then this part I machined slightly smaller uh, than the crankshaft pin diameter so it can pass through the crank web. And then uh, you just need to um, locate it uh, underneath the ram and press it out. Okay, so I've got everything aligned now and I've made sure that uh, no parts of the press tool uh, can interfere with the uh, shaft. Um, and I've also got uh, plenty of clearance on each side of the uh, crankshaft. So I'm gonna start pressing it out. And there it goes. and it's out. So now I have the two crankshaft webs separated, uh, but the pin is still in uh, what used to be the bottom part, so I need to press that out. So I've set my jig up in a very similar way, uh, using the KTM plate on my spacers, and I'm just gonna press the plate out. And I was watching the force and that, that was getting up to about uh, seven tons uh, when I was pressing it. So here you can see the crankshaft disassembled. Uh, the two crank webs both in good shape. Uh, I cleaned them up. Uh, the pin uh, you can see here in the middle it's got some discoloration where the big end bearing uh, wears on it. Uh, the big end bearing, uh, two thrust washers and uh, the conrod. Conrod looks in good shape, no damage. I thought it'd be interesting to take some basic measurements of the KTM OEM Conrod kit and compare those results to the Pro-X kit. This table shows a summary of uh, the measurement results. Uh, the Conrod length appeared to be exactly the same, so I haven't listed that. Uh, the major differences I, I saw were, as I mentioned at the start of the video, uh, the pin length uh, was uh, quite significantly different. So the KTM OEM uh, pin length was 59.90 millimeters, 
and uh, the Pro X kit was 59.75. The complete kit weight, including the thrust washers, the big end bearing, and the pin, uh, came to 410 grams for the KTM and uh, was 8 grams lighter for the Pro X at 402 grams. Looking more carefully at the Conrod design, uh, the Pro X is on the left, KTM is on the right. Uh, the most obvious difference is uh, the small end bearing journal. Uh, you can see here the KTM has this big uh, slot machined into it um, for oil entry and uh, the Pro X has two holes, so quite a difference. Uh, you can see the material uh, width is uh, quite a bit different actually. The Pro X is thicker around here, um, but the reverse is true of the big end uh, bearing journal material. So uh, the KTM is a little bit thicker than the Pro X there. And then uh, the Conrod design here is different as well. Uh, you can see these webs are a little thicker on the KTM. And at the other end of the Conrod, so uh, the Pro X is on the left, KTM on the right, uh, you can see some design differences. So uh, the all entry um, slot for the big end bearing, uh, the width is larger, uh, the external width is larger on the Pro X than the KTM. Uh, the internal uh, slot dimensions appear to be very similar though. Okay, so this is the press tool setup I have for pressing a new pin into half of the crankshaft. Uh, so the tool on the top is the plate supplied with the KTM uh, jig and uh, I'm just resting that on two blocks and then you can install uh, the crankshaft on top of that and because this is resting flat on uh, the plate, it means that when you press the new pin in, uh, it can only be pressed in as far as uh, flush. So it's important um, to have it resting on something flat so that you can't press it in too far. And then you, you'll need to uh, lube up the pin and uh, inside and then uh, press it in. Okay, so that's the pin pressed in uh, half the crankshaft and it's flush. I used a, a, a straight edge to check and it's perfectly flush, so that's good. If you notice when I was pressing it in, uh, when it uh, reached the plate, the sound changed quite a bit. So it's quite easy to uh, spot when it, it becomes flush. Okay, so now I'm ready to assemble the new conrod onto half the crankshaft. And I should note that I'm using the KTM OEM kit. Um, it comes with two thrust washers uh, and the big end bearing. And I've got some two-stroke oil, so I'm going to lube up all of the parts as I assemble it. And the service manual uh, states that uh, you should lube the uh, bearing thoroughly, so I'm going to do that. And I'm going to lube the inside of the conrod as well. And both sides. And then install the bearing onto that. And then uh, the orientation I don't think matters. Um, I'm going to orient it the same as uh, the stock one was. So with the numbers towards the flywheel. And then the last step is to put the other thrust washer on. Okay, so this is the press setup for pressing the two halves of the crank together. Uh, you saw the jig before. Uh, inside it, I've got half of the crank uh, with the pin 
pressed in and uh, the conrod assembled as you saw me assembling it and uh, it's sitting flush with the bottom uh, the base here um, so when pushing down uh, the pin cannot be pushed out of uh, the lower uh, crank web and then I'm going to put the other half of the crank on I've lubed up uh, the pin and I've also lubed up uh, the outer surfaces of uh, both cranks so that they can uh, move easily inside the jig and uh, self-align. And I've got the uh, press plate that came with the jig on top of the crank. Okay, so I'm just checking that uh, the pin is aligned with the hole in the crank web and uh, that looks perfect. Make sure it is correct before you start pressing and double check it and also that uh, the pressuring is centered and uh, then you want to press um, immediately above uh, the pin uh, so in this area okay so I have everything lined up now um, I have the old crank pin here and it's located directly above the new crank pin and I'm going to be pressing down and uh, that should go on smoothly. And I think that's it. So I'm going to take it out and do some measurements. Okay, so I've got the newly assembled crankshaft on the bench. Uh, the first thing I'm going to check is that the conrod moves freely, uh, which it does, so that's good. And uh, next I'm going to check the axial play. Um, so you want to push the conrod to one side and uh, open up a gap. So I've got it pushed apart. And uh, the spec is between 0.6 and 0.7 millimeters. So I'm using a 0.6 millimeter feeler gauge and uh, that fits in nicely. Definitely bigger than 0.6 and uh, I'm pretty sure 0.7 is not going to fit in. No, that's not going to fit in. So uh, the gap is between 0.6 and 0.7 so it's right within spec so I'm really happy with that. And the other check I'm going to do is uh, measure the width, overall width of the uh, crank webs. So originally it was uh, 59.98 and now it is measuring 59.91. Um, so I put that down to uh, the new crank pin I measured at uh, 50.90. Uh, so I think it was uh, slightly shorter than the original crank pin. But uh, just long as your axial play is within spec, uh, that's no problem. So I'm really happy with that. I'm happy how easily uh, the new crankshaft went together. If you don't have enough axial play after you've made it, uh, you'll have to uh, press the pin out slightly. So using uh, the press plate, uh, just nudge it out very slightly, remeasure, and you might have to go to and fro several times until you get it within spec. If I'd used uh, the Pro-X Conrod kit, I would have definitely had to adjust the axial play because uh, the pin was considerably shorter than the OEM pin. In the next part of this series, you'll see me measuring the runout of the newly assembled crankshaft and throwing it if necessary.